Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Friday, September 9th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. The music at the Intersection Festival is this weekend with jazz, blues, R&B, and rock artists. Tenor sax player Kamasi Washington says it's a chance to bring his artistic vision to life. Come with with open heart and the audience itself, the energy you bring, the life force that you bring into the room, it definitely affects us. So we're all going to kind of create something together. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports on Washington's inspiration and artistic process. St. Louis voters will go to the polls next week in the primary for president of the Board of Aldermen. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippman has a preview. Because of the city's approval voting system, both 15th Ward Alderwoman Megan Green and 7th Ward Alderman Jack Coder will advance to the general election, regardless of the results of the September 13th primary. But the city's Republican elections director, Gary Stoff, says people should cast a ballot anyway. Elections and voting is an important right. We've had wars far fought over that. Whoever wins the general election will fill the remaining five months of Lewis Reed's term. He resigned in June and pleaded guilty last month to federal corruption charges. Both Coder and Green are pledging to make the basic services of the city, such as trash collection and 911, work for the residents. I'm Rachel Lipman, St. Louis Public Radio. That contest next week for Board of Aldermen President will be the first election since a new law took effect requiring voters to show a state issued photo ID to cast a ballot. A nonprofit will hold a clinic in North St. Louis this weekend to help people in low income areas obtain proper identification. Volunteers with the Oshray Foundation will discuss how to get a birth certificate and a Missouri non driver photo ID card. Executive Director Sarah Ruiz says the clinic could reduce the barriers to accessing a photo ID. For someone who is working multiple jobs, who maybe doesn't have fares to pay the bus to get to where they need to go, is going to make some really hard choices so that they can exercise the constitutional right to vote. The clinic is from 10 to 2 tomorrow at the Tabernacle Hub Center on East Prairie Avenue. A Boone County judge says there is no pattern of domestic violence in the child custody case involving former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens. That's despite allegations by his ex-wife, Sheena. The judge adds the children have, quote, never been at risk or vulnerable at the hands of either parent. The Associated Press obtained those court documents. The judge has decided as well that the two children should move to Texas because they spend most of their time in that state and it will better protect them from public scrutiny. The St. Louis Port Authority has passed a resolution that could bring an ambitious development to North St. Louis. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports it involves a plan for the city's first marina on the Mississippi Riverfront. The Port Authority's resolution allows Nashville-based developer M2 Development Partners to begin negotiations with city officials. They're seeking incentives to buy and develop the 70-acre property north of Interstate 270. The company plans to buy the property and turn it into a mixed-use destination with a marina, hotel, and water park. M2 Managing Principal Tim Morris told the Port Authority the Chain of Rocks Canal and Lowhead Dam south of the site means it's perfect for the city's first marina. The fact that the water sort of slows down at the Point of Rocks and there's no real barge traffic coming through calms the water significantly and, and makes it a prime site for a marina. The plot of land was filled in by former developers to raise it above the floodplain. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. The authority has also voted to move ahead with a plan by consumer products maker Procter & Gamble for a $180 million expansion of its plant on the riverfront. That investment could secure more than 500 jobs and bring roughly 100 additional positions. Regulators in India have approved a Washington University nasal vaccine to protect against COVID-19. The university licensed the technology to a biotech company in that country. WashU professor Michael Diamond is a co-inventor. He says getting the vaccine through the nose stops the virus as it enters the body. You would um, have milder symptoms for those who are going to get symptoms at all and uh, hopefully prevent transmission to others. That's the idea of the nasal vaccine. It's also not as finicky about temperature as the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, and there's no bio-waste from needles. Diamond says that should make it easier to distribute globally. India is the only country so far 
that has approved that nasal spray. Hi, I'm St. Louis Public Radio midday host Greg Montanu. We are in our member campaign, and your support is crucial for The Gateway. We also rely on it for entertainment programs like The Next Set and live broadcasts of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. You can keep our news and programming strong with a donation at stlpr.org. And thanks. Tenor sax player Kamasi Washington has established himself as one of the go-to jazz artists over the past decade, crafting concept albums, working with rap and R&B artists, and scoring the music for a former First Lady's documentary. He and his band are in St. Louis this weekend for the Music at the Intersection Festival. St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports. The last time Kamasi Washington was in St. Louis several years ago, he was playing keyboards for Shaka Khan. Now he's back in the city this weekend, and he wants audiences to get ready. Come um, with, with open heart, and the audience itself, the energy you bring, the life force that you bring into the room, it definitely affects us. So we're all going to kind of create something together. Since his last visit, Washington has become one of his generation's go-to jazz artists. He exploded onto the scene in 2015 with his debut album, The Epic. It's a sprawling, critically acclaimed triple album with lush instrumentation and contributions from jazz artists. Since then, he's collaborated with Kendrick Lamar, Robert Glasper, Thundercat, and even Michelle Obama, scoring her Netflix documentary, Becoming. Washington has had quite the journey with his band, and his songwriting and composing process is a collaborative approach that he compares to gardening. Songs start off as like seeds, just like some little idea, you know, and then I start to just grow it, and I start to find other ideas that can attach to it, you know, I start to think of the orchestration, the arrangement, and then once I feel like it's at a certain place, then I bring it to the musicians. From there, Washington relies on his bandmates to provide their own touches. Vocalists like Patrice Quinn appear on the tracks and give it their all. Our minds, our bodies, our feelings, they change, they alter. A lot of times, to me, it's, it's a very gradual process, you know. So I have songs that, you know, kind of stay almost in, in, the, in the incubator <laughs> for a long time as I'm trying to figure out what it wants to be or what it should be or what it will best, what it will be best at. That process creates music that's inspired by science fiction, social justice, and our reality versus the world we want to live in. It's a central theme in Washington's 2018 album, Heaven and Earth. How we see the world affects how the world is, and how the world is affects how we see the world, and like there's a kind of a, a circle, a cycle in that, you know, and as you want to, um, have an effect on the world, you have to see the world in that in, in that same way. We will no longer ask we will no for justice. Longer ask for justice. Instead, we will take our Elements of Afrofuturism and science fiction are present in much of Washington's music and his own short films and an upcoming graphic novel he started writing during the pandemic. New music is on the way, but for now, he and his band aren't just ready to play music here. They're ready to sit back and take on new experiences. I always like to like go out and, and, and you know, especially playing like festivals and hear, hear uh, different artists. And I usually actually look for artists that I've never heard before. Washington will play at Music at the Intersection Saturday night at 8.05 at the Big Top Stage. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Have a great weekend.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.